Okay, the first step is getting all the wood and the tools home. So this is my storage unit. It's a big RV unit where I keep my tools and my wood and all of our Christmas junk. So I'll put this, I've got this trailer, I'll take all the tools home and I've gone through the shameful assortment of wood that I keep tucked back in here. And I think I found some wood for the cutting board. A lot of the furniture and stuff I build is reclaimed lumber. So like these four by fours are out of an old barn structure. So you can't use that kind of stuff for food contact. Uh, those big two by twelves are out of a carriage house that was remodeled down in the historic district. And this is a collection of hardwoods that I bought off of Craigslist for a guy that was closing his shop. And so I may use some of this. Uh, we've got some Purple Heart there, some Wenge. Uh, that one there is Red Heart. I think that's Ash, some Peruvian Walnut. Uh, There's a big stock of maple, that are, a pile of maple that I bought off of Facebook. And then these are all the cutoffs of other projects that are good for things like cutting boards. But we're going to go a little thicker than most of that. So I went through that pile and pulled out some things to the right thickness. So here's a big piece of cherry that's nice and thick. We can get some pieces out of that. Uh, we've got some walnut that's still got the bark edge on it, some maple. This is a piece of Peruvian walnut that I made the rockers on Maxton's Rocky Horse out of. And then we've got some strips of some white oak, a couple strips of cherry, some strips of walnut, some other walnut. But we're gonna get most of our walnut from a piece of walnut that was cut down back in the 70s. So I've got these two pieces, what are called slabs. They're just the strips cut out of trees that are walnut off of Governor Bellman's walnut farm. So Denise has laid claim to the big one for something that she wants done, although she doesn't know what it is yet. And then the end piece there is left over from a step stool that I made for Maxton when he was potty training. So we should be able to get most of our walnut out of that piece there. Because of the design plan, we're gonna need a bending form. So I've gathered a bunch of this old, not old, but offcuts and scraps of plywood from other projects from, actually most of them from when I built these carts for my tools. And we'll haul the wood and all the tools back to the house and convert the garage into our workshop and we'll get started. Okay, so we got all the tools in the garage. So it's no longer a garage, it's a workshop. And the first thing we did was all those small pieces of offcuts that I showed you yesterday. We've cut them into these small strips. And the piece of the Bellman Walnut, I cut it down and got it squared up and it's ready to start working with. So the design idea that I have is either gonna work good and look really cool, or it's gonna work not at all and we'll go to plan B. We'll uh, be sending you a cutting board that looks suspiciously like the William and Sonoma logo was sanded off of it. So the reason I've cut these thin strips is I'm gonna mix them together and create kind of a wave form through the center of the walnut cutting board. So the next step is to cut this glue, this form so that we can bend those thin strips into a wave. So we'll cut this form and see what happens. Okay, we've done a dry run, played with the pattern. I think this is the pattern we're gonna go for with the wave. We've got the Peruvian walnut, some cherry, maple, some more walnut, cherry, uh, a couple pieces of black walnut, piece of white oak in the center, and then the same thing going out again. So we've got it clamped up, all of our pieces fully tight and flush. So now the trick is to glue them and clamp them so that it fits inside this form and has the wave to it. 
Okay, we got the first piece of the wave in the forms. So we'll let that sit for an hour or two and then do another section of it. Okay, for this last section of the wave, I just set the camera to record and sped it up to about 10 speed. It took about 15 minutes to get this part all done. But we get the section out of clamps and we've got to put on the last section of strips. Uh, each strip has to be covered in glue on both sides. Uh, we use a waterproof food safe glue. And then once we get all the sections glued together or covered in glue, we've got to get it clamped together. The wet glue makes the sections kind of slippery, so you can see that they're sliding around a little bit as we clamp them. And we want to make sure they don't get too misaligned, either left and right or up and down. So I put that second clamp on to keep them from sliding up too far. And we get all the pieces in, get it all clamped down, and we're good to go on the last section of the wave. Okay, we got the wave out of the clamps. It's obviously covered in glue and not quite even yet. Probably peel it. Flip it over, it's a little flatter where it was against the form. Get a little bit better look at what the wave is gonna look like. So we're gonna run this through a couple machines, get this dead smooth. A different machine will get this flat and even and parallel with the back side. And then we'll trim the ends off to make it square. And then we'll cut a straight edge about right there and right there. So it's the same shape as a regular piece of wood or board. And then we'll glue it in between these and get it clamped together and then we should have our rough cutting board ready to get sanded okay we've got our wave trimmed down to the shape of a regular board now we're going to run it through the planer get the top smooth and leveled out take all that excess glue off So there's our wave. It's all ready to build into the got straight, square, smooth, flat on both sides. So now we're ready to build it into the rest of the cutting board. Okay, we're getting closer to the end now. Uh, I think this is going to be our final layout. It's just dry fit right now. All the boards are just laying next to each other. So we've got the majority of the board. This is all Bellman Walnut which in retrospect may not be of any consequence to anybody outside of Oklahoma and really to the people inside Oklahoma that aren't involved in woodworking probably don't know what it means either. Bellman was a governor twice. His only real claim to fame that I can think of is he was our first Republican governor. So we became a state in 1907 and did not have a Republican governor until the mid 60s. But it's a beautiful walnut and it was cut down 40 years ago. Um, so I think it will make a very beautiful board. So we've got, we're gonna let the walnut be the star of the show. Obviously the wave is an, a nice accent piece. We've got our walnut cut into uh, one inch, inch and a half and quarter inch sections and kind of alternated through the board to give the board some depth without giving it a significant pattern. Walnut is darker the closer you get to the center of the tree 
and conversely the lighter towards the bark. So since it all came out of one slab or just one slice out of the middle of the tree, we have a good variation across the entire slab. So once it gets glued up and oiled up, it should give us a really nice look. So we'll get all these pieces slathered with glue and then the clamps and be one step closer to done. Back now, that's gonna be the pattern. It's all glued up, it's clamped. We'll let it sit overnight and then we'll trim it down to size and start sanding. Okay, let's get this out of the clamps and see what we end up with. Alright, there we go. So we'll get this sanded down and get the uh, sides cut to final length. Be good to go. Okay, we've got it out of the clamps. We're going to run it through the drum sander to get it smooth and flat on both sides. And then we'll start the finish sanding. We'll do that about 15 more times and then we'll see what happens next. Okay, this is where we're at. The board is cut to its final dimensions. It's sanded almost to its finish smoothness. Um, after we get the edge profile done and the juice groove done, we'll do one more round of sanding on it to get it to its final uh, finish. But this is the most terrifying part, is plunging that spinning bit down into what so far looks to be a very nice board. I've got the guidelines drawn on it, about an inch and a half in from the edge. We're gonna cut a half inch groove all along that line if everything goes as planned. So we'll see how it goes. okay we cut the groove in two passes so we don't cut too deep in one shot but I'm gonna switch it over to time-lapse and unclamp and rotate and cut and unclamp and rotate and cut and unclamp and rotate and cut a few times 
and we'll take a look at the finished product here in a little while. Well, that went about as well as we could hope. No disasters, nothing that sends this thing to the burn pile. Now we gotta do some more sanding. You gotta sand down in the grooves and there's a little bit of a sharp edge at both corners or both edges of the groove. So we'll sand that up. But now what's left is to give it its final sanding, soak it with mineral oil and put the feet on it. Okay, so I think we've got it all sanded and ready to treat the edges. So all these edges have a sharp 90 degree on them and can actually, if you run your hand across it, you can actually cut yourself with the edge. And I think instead of using the router to round them over, we're gonna go kind of old school and just use what's called a block plane to soften the edges but we wanna make sure we do it in the right direction because the wood grain is running this direction as we plane along this direction, this back edge can tear out. So if I do it on this piece as an example, you can see how the back side of that, if that's gonna show up, how the back side of that cut broke the chipped off which if there's anything you don't want to do is be down to the next to the last stage on the project and screw it up so to avoid that we do the long sides first we make sure we get them all even all the way around we try to count our strokes so if we go at a 45 degree angle ish around the edge of it, one, two, and you can see it's just peeling off that corner and the pieces are going to get thicker the more we go, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you see now we're getting these curly cues as the piece as that strip gets longer. And so we've got 10 on that side. We'll do 10 on all the sides and then see how we like to look at that. Okay, so we've got the bottom side chamfered all the way around. So instead of having kind of a rounded edge, we have a nice little chamfer all the way around. Gives it a little bit different look. Maybe it looks a little more handmade as opposed to manufactured in a factory. So that's the bottom side chamfered all the way around. Then we'll flip it over and do the top.
Okay, we've got all of our corners tampered, top and bottom. I think I tried to show you the curly cues earlier, but sh didn't show them on screen. So these are all the trimmings that used to be the corners of the board. So now we're gonna do one final sanding. We'll mark it and drill the holes for where the feet go on and then we'll oil it. Okay, this is every woodworker's favorite part. You put the finish on, or the oil on, and you get to get a really good understanding of how it's gonna look. Well, the juice groove is doing its job. Okay, now we just let that soak in until it's ready for some more. Then we'll flip it over and do the other side. Okay, we're on the very last step. We're gonna put the rubber feet on. So we're gonna do them two inches in from each edge. So we've got these two squares set up. We need two inches and two inches. Use the hole punch to set that spot. So when we drill our hole, our drill bit doesn't wander. obviously not so deep that it pokes out the other side. So we're going to use this piece of tape on the drill bit. It tells us how deep our holes need to be. stainless steel screws so they don't rust. And I think that's it. I'll take it in the kitchen and let it acclimate for a day or two. It'll probably keep oozing oil as it gets accustomed to the inside temperatures. And then probably Tuesday or Wednesday, we'll wrap it in butcher paper and send it on its way. It's over. Go home.